Hey, F-holes. Yeah, I'm talking about you big F-hole and you little F-hole. So this episode, you might have guessed, is about sound holes, what they are, why they are, and what we can do with them in our cigar box guitars. Before we go to the bench, remember, at the end of the video, there's an email address for me. You're going to see some iCards popping up through the video. You might want to click on those. Those are links to episodes or information, useless or maybe useful. Uh, you make the decision. Uh, but at the end, there's a subscribe button in the middle and playlists for all my videos. Okay, last thing before I hit the bench, I want to give you a little brain teaser. Has there ever been a song written about F-holes. Let's hit the bench. Okay, guys, get things off the ground here. Um, we all know that violins have been around for centuries, and these F-holes uh, are have been around as long as at least violins have. You started seeing them show up on some of your arch tops, but basically they're a sound hole like you see in this guitar here. Now, prior to pickups and all the things that we have now that amplify sound, um, there was a lot to do about the body of the guitar, the shape of it, um, the depth of it, and all those types of things. And where sound holes came into it is when you would strum the strings, it would resonate into the body and come back out the sound hole. So the sound hole was a means of amplifying your guitar out to the audience you were playing for. Here's a guitar I built a few years ago. Um, it's got my typical setup. It's got the Camacho a 60 by 6 box. It's got a coil. Um, and it's got these sound holes here. Now, acoustically, uh, these help the guitar out to resonate. If I cover these up and hit it, and that's without any amplifier or anything, and pull them off, it resonates better. But of course, I wasn't thinking about how much it would resonate um, when I built it because, you know, I put coils on my stuff. That's a little bit different than this. Now, while you're looking at this picture of this guitar, I'll move my hand around and, and do stuff like this or something so it doesn't get so boring. But why were there sound holes and resonators and things like that? Well, if you go back to Sun House and Charlie Patton and people like that, you listen to their, their music and their voice is really loud. It's almost obnoxiously loud. The resonator came about to uh, increase the volume of things because these people were playing house parties and stuff. And so... Having sound holes in a way to uh, amplify uh, the body of the guitar was really important before these pickups and piezos and that type of stuff came along. Now you'll remember, I started doing these sound holes, not so much for sound holes, but because I could put these sink drains in them, run a bolt through the box, and that way, there was an easy way for me to take these thumb screws off and instead of having to take my strings and everything off, I could open this up in a matter of seconds and get to the guts of the guitar, see? That's really why I started using these sound holes. It was more about using these as a means of closing the box. All right. Yeah, I still uh, like this setup. It's easy, pretty maintenance-free, and I still can't figure out how uh, to get to the insides so quickly without taking off the strings other than this. But don't get me wrong, there's sometimes that this could be more attractive. Maybe I want to theme something. Um, I did a, a cigar box guitar that went back to Mississippi with Luther Dickinson one time. It was radioactive themed based on one of their gig posters, a North Mississippi All-Stars gig poster. Um, hey, you should look for that guitar and see which episode you find it in. And if you get a hold of me and you know which one it is and you're right, maybe I'll send you a little something. But anyway, I've sometimes wondered, is there a way that I could have something like this that would enhance the theming of my guitars and then I could put them here or maybe I could even use something a little smaller up on the headstock like that. Um, 
hey I found it and I'm gonna share something with you right now okay before I forget my friend Al from SoCal that's out there where I'm at Ask me a question. I always appreciate your questions. His question was, what cardstock are you using for graphics? Like this graphic. Answer's real easy. Georgia Pacific premium cardstock available just about anywhere. While I'm here, I'm going to give you a plug. Right up here about now, there's an eye popping up for my graphics episode. That's been real popular with everybody. So, Thanks for your question, Al. Georgia Pacific Premium Card Stock. All right, thanks again, Al from SoCal. Let's get this out of the way. And it's time to play Trash a Cigar Box. We got a few around, and unfortunately, this one is going to be the template today where we figure out how to cut sound holes and what to do. So if I'm going to put a sound hole on the top of this box, I think I've told you about Forstner bits before. I've got a set of them here, and you'll notice some of them are marked. Um, I use inch and a half sink drains, so I know from experience that this drain here, or this Forstner bit here, fits the bottom of this drain, but it's smaller than the lip. So if I drill a hole in right here, that's going to drop down the edge of the drain is going to catch and it's going to work out for me. So the first thing I want to do is, before I start drilling sound holes, whatever I'm going to use is figure out how big the hole is by maybe taking Forstner bits and seeing, is that going to work for me? Uh, do I need something a little bigger? Because there's some aesthetic involved definitely not athletics aesthetic you see what I mean there so you're gonna pick the right size Forstner bit now before I use a Forstner bit I'm always gonna drill a small pilot hole to put the tip of the Forstner bit into before I start bearing through the box okay so let's start drilling away right no wrong there's a couple things we need to think about here before we put the drill to this thing first off where's everything gonna lay out is our neck uh, going to be here is going to come over the box a little bit. Are we going to use box corners? Are they going to come into play? I certainly don't want to put this up here and then have a box corner clash, have it look goofy. You want to make sure that everything is measured out. And then when I figure out where I'm going to do this, I usually use an awl. I'll hold that there. I'm going to be kind of sloppy here and I'll tap this. Once I've got that hole there, I want to take my small square here I want to figure out where that hole is I can flip this around measure it here do the same thing here and here and get everything laid out so layouts really important before you start drilling holes and again you want to think about what is this all going to look like is this too big for this box with my neck being right here scale is really important you don't want your stuff looking goofy so I've drilled the small pilot hole there Put on my Forstner bit. Now I've got my Forstner bits marked because I don't want to go digging through the box every time, but I always want to put them away. And uh, something else I want you to notice is I've got the clutch. I set the clutch way down because if this hangs up, this wood is really thin on these boxes and, and you'll end up ruining anything. But I put the tip down in that hole right there. Let me find it here. There we go. And then that drops in right there. Same thing could be with any size hole. Um, just do the layout right and you'll be good to go. Okay, I've drilled another hole in the middle of this box here. So I can show you, if I don't want to use the sink drain, I want to go with something else. I want to show you some ideas. Um, this one, the sound hole is about the right size for this one. Uh, looks good. Could be a tad bigger if I want to hide the edges here. But again, the whole function of a sound hole for using this type of application is to get the sound to resonate and come out of the box. So don't forget that. Um, but I've got my sound hole drilled. I could probably glue this on or something like that. I don't like to do that. So I would just, this one has pre-drilled holes. I would just drill my pilot holes for the same type of screws that I would use 
told my tuners on or anything and that that will work it's pretty simple okay so there's the hole um, we'll take just about anything you can see that I've drilled those pilot holes I can screw this on here um, but I got to share something with you again I'm really hesitant to call out people's products too much you know they got to be durable and they got to last a long time and uh, you know this business goes up and down sometimes so but I do have to call your attention to something when I was looking to do this episode I talked to one of the suppliers I use for some of my stuff you've seen this name before MGB shout out to you Michael um, but I said hey Michael I'm gonna do a, a, an episode on sound holes and there are people that do something different than what I typically do what do you have in stock that's a solution that they can just contact you and order something and he sent me a bunch of samples what he sent was me was pretty amazing he's got the quite quite the selection of pre-made stuff if you want to do a gambler Vegas based theme he's got these um, uh, there's some there's a sheriff star Florida Lee he's got a couple of uh, different ornate things that will touch up your stuff um, we got the variation, the modern sink drain. I like that. He, if you're a hippie, there you go. Uh, that was a favorite with one of the kids. We got Star Wars. We got Pink Floyd, Welcome to the Machine. I mean, we got just about everything here. And the nice thing about this is they will fit the same holes. The sink drain, cover it up, drill three holes two holes, four holes, whatever you want to do and mount it the same way. Um, it just depends on how big you want your sound hole to be. These will cover it right up and they're made of a size that keeps everything in scale. So I like that. Okay, I played around with these a little bit to see how they would do. Um, this one got painted. Uh, it, it took engine enamel really well. Of course, I went to the belt sander. It looks like they come in without any finish on them so they're ready to take whatever you want to put on them but they take paint sometimes I use a stain to give things weathered look that it took that well I use coffee stain that I made myself and use it on this one but I kind of wanted to point out to you when they come in one side of them looks pretty uh, clear wood the other side's got this almost like a burn rust looking thing and this gear is uh, really it works really good with this gear um, but it's got this burnt look to it and you might like that so um, there's a lot of choices you have here they're ready to go I didn't have to sand them at all other than just my own want to make sure that there's nothing on there that they would take to finish well but they were ready to work with the only thing I would have to do now is figure out how I want to mount them, whether I wanted to put some holes there or what and you want to remember I mean, there's quite the selection. You've got a lot of uh, variety here to choose from. Check it out. I got my chip stacked up here. It reminds me of being in Vegas. Anyway, when I got my package, I talked to Michael a little bit about the crossroads and said, you know, maybe you could do something with the 61 and 49 uh, theme where Robert Johnson traded his soul to the devil uh, in order to play guitar forget about Sun House and Willie Brown that he hung out with forever but anyway uh, when I got my package I couldn't believe what I was looking at look at these how cool is that yeah so I could put these up here uh, the scales just right be easy to mount I could put them here uh, there's a million uses for this and as soon as people heard that these were going out, I think he did one for Route 66. So if you're into that, I mean, you can't beat this. This is awesome. Hey, guys, you've seen me use like coins and bottle caps and headstocks before. But this offers a great possibility all over the guitar. I'm doing uh, an episode called Headstocks, which I'm going to show you how to do everything headstock. But as soon as these come in, I started looking at, wow, check that out. This sets my brain running. And I could mount this one here, 
flip it over, have the other one on the on the back side. I could have the other one on the body somewhere. Million possibilities here. Uh, Michael, you hit it out of the park with this one, buddy. One more time, there'll be a link below uh, down to MGB where you can get a hold of them and, and find out if any of these will work for you. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to take a look at your product, Michael, especially these two. I'm raving over these. Yeah, it's 61 and 49, I'm sure. So there it is. Everything you always want to know about sound holes and possibly more. Uh, I want to send a shout out to MGB Guitars for sending those samples that I could share with you. There's a link below to their site. Uh, they make it easy for you to bring uh, theming into your guitars and make them unique for your customers and you know I'm a proponent of that. Okay, do you remember that trivia question I asked at the very beginning? Has there ever been a song about F-holes? There sure has been. It's called F-Hole Parade by, you guessed it, Bob Log the Third, And that's what's been playing in the background right there. And in fact, that that you're hearing there was played on this guitar by Bob Log the Third. So we'll close out this episode with... That's right, Bob Log playing F Hole Parade on this guitar right here. See you next time.